Okay, g'day all. Uh, welcome to another toot. So, uh, we're going to be spending a bit of time now in plain old C++. Uh, bear with me because uh, we are about to jump back into assembly, but we've got to learn, uh, or we've got to go through this middleman, C++, the middleman. So the front end that we were looking at last time, the image and front end, uh, is actually written in .NET 4.5 using C Sharp. Uh, but like we said, uh, C Sharp's not really, it's not really built to process massive amounts of data. So what we're going to do is uh, use C++ as a middleman, and the image in front end will call the C++ middleman, and from this middleman uh, we can call native assembly. Uh, also, if you like, like most uh, plugins will probably be fine in plain old C++, like there's no need to jump into assembly. Uh, anyway, we're going to go through assembly anyway, because that's what this tutorial series is all about. Um, alrighty, I've just started a new project here. Uh, it's just an empty project, and what we've got to do is make a 64-bit DLL plugin that Imogen can load. Uh, we're going to go through the code to the negative plugin that we saw last shoot. Um, okay, so open up a new project. Uh, this will just be a general introduction uh, to how to make a DLL readable from um, .NET 4.5 C Sharp, uh, a native DLL that is. And uh, also just a little introduction to how the plugins work for my program. Okay, so first things that we want to do is probably add a new item, uh, a header. I'm going to call mine, uh, I guess, test plugin. Yeah, I'll add a header called test plugin, and I'll also add a source code file called test plugin. Alrighty, so we'll go back to the header. Uh, one of the first things that you want to do is change it to 64-bit. Yeah, we're using 64 bits here. If you keep it as a 32-bit DLL, uh, the program isn't going to load your plugin. So change it to 64 bits with your configuration manager. And the other thing that we want to do is change it to a DLL. So the empty project starts out as an EXE. So come down to your project properties and configuration properties. And you should see here configuration type application.exe. Uh, that's not what we want. We want a dynamic link library. And it's called dynamic link library, incidentally, because um, there are other sorts of libraries that your programs link to when they're compiled. But uh, these ones, dynamic link libraries, the programs link to them uh, while they're running. Anyway, that's really, really good for plugins. That's exactly what we want. Uh, okay, so no common language runtime support. We've got to change that. We're interacting here with uh, .NET 4.5, and we need common language runtime support for the system namespace. So select that, Common Language Runtime Support, that's the slash CLR. Click Apply and OK. Alrighty, so we're now making a 64-bit DLL, and uh, a lot of the code that we're going to go through today is uh, mostly to do with uh, interacting with .NET 4.5 from uh, native C++. But where we are right here in um, you know a C++ DLL, we know that we're really close to assembly and uh, native programming, so uh, it just acts as a really good middleman. Anyway, stop saying middleman. Pragma. Alrighty, we put a pragma once at the top of our header. Why not? Using namespace system. Uh, so that's what we got. That namespace there we got from uh, using that CLR option to the uh, project properties. And I'm going to put mine in a namespace called test plugin, my class, in a namespace called test plugin, call that whatever you want. Uh, something to do with your plugin probably, so this is just going to be a negative plugin, but I'm just going to call it test plugin. Uh, your class, the main class that we're just about to go through, must be in a namespace, otherwise Imogen's not going to be interested in uh, talking to it. Okay, so the class, or, or what happens is the program looks in the uh, plugins directory for any DLL files, and each of the DLL files, it loads them and it checks if they've got a, uh, a class called main. 
And uh, if they do, it's this class that Imogen talks to. So you need this main class. And I think it's case sensitive. I'm not sure. <laughs> I should know probably, but um, yeah, use a capital M A I N. Uh, you've got to mark this class public so that it's uh, exported and so that you know external programs can see it when they load the DLL. You've got to mark it ref so that it's being passed around as a .NET reference class. And you've also got to mark it sealed, which uh, just means that other classes won't derive from it. Yeah, that's all part of interacting with uh, .NET. Um, it's really, really cool to be able to do this, you know, interact with um, the .NET framework from native code. So I hope this is a useful tool. Okay, uh, public. So uh, we've got to make a couple of public methods. Come on, IntelliSense. Throw us a bone, mate. What are you doing? No additional, inf <laughs> no additional information is available. Have a look at the help. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Mm, one of those things. Okay, so each plugin function uh, has to be described with uh, a describe method. So the plugin function that I'm making just here is called test plugin. And uh, what you do to make a describe method, you just put describe underscore and then the name of your function that you're making. So test plugin. Uh, also, you've got to mark it static. Uh, Imogen's not going to make an instance of this class. It's just going to try and call static methods. So mark it static. And the describe functions just return a list of strings, yeah, which describes what your function does. Okay, so static um, void. Inside a long dt int width. It's not how you spell width. <laughs> That's better. Int height and action. Um, Time. Redraw function. Um, okay, well, uh, I hope I haven't got any typos, but that's the um, prototype to an actual plugin function. So you've got two functions to uh, describe a plugin and then to actually execute the plugin function itself. Uh, once again, you've got to mark plugin functions as static. And this is the prototype, so obviously your name can be whatever you want. Uh, they return void, so they don't return anything. Uh, unsigned long long, I call it DT, and that's actually a 64-bit pointer to the floating point array, which is your color data, as we'll see in a second. Um, don't ask why I called it an unsigned long long. <laughs> uh, int width and int height is the width and height of your image in pixels. And action date time redraw function, this is actually a uh, callback to have uh, image and redraw your function so that you could make you know a window with um, a couple of controls on it and if the user clicks the controls in your plugin then uh, you can ask Imogen to redraw with the uh, redraw callback and that takes a date time okay so that's pretty much all there is to the header uh, let's move over to the C++ side of things C++, the CPP side of things um, okay, so we've got to put it in the same namespace. Test function. Test plugin. Test plugin. Okay, and uh, in this file here, we'll describe the code to those uh, things that we just spoke about. Um, okay, so let's just copy this over to here. Actually, I should include that. Yeah, don't forget to include your header at the top. Um, what am I doing? Uh, okay, main is the name of the class. Okay, so this is the body to the uh, describe test plugin function, and all you've got to do here is make a uh, system collection of uh, strings which describe your plugin function and returns it to Imogen. And uh, Imogen's expecting all of this information, and if it doesn't get it, uh, it won't load your plugin. So, uh, 
I might just call it F for no particular reason. GC new, not regular new, GC new. And one of these. Okay, so that line just makes a new uh, system collection uh, which C sharp can understand. So this namespace and everything just here, this system collections generic list, that's actually the uh, string lists that C sharp understands. That's why we're using all this GC new and you know horrible syntax like that. It's it's all to do with interacting with uh, .NET 4.5. Anyway. Oh, IntelliSense, come on, mate. Okay, name. Uh, I'll just call it test function. Uh, all we've got to do now is add one string after another to this uh, F list just here. So these are the items that Imogen's expecting. Number one, it's expecting a name. And I might just copy this a few times and paste. Uh, it's also expecting a location. And this isn't used at the moment, but uh, we'll just put default there. So that'll be uh, later on when I add um, paintbrushes and things like that. You might have toolbox locations and stuff like that. But at the moment, all of the locations are the same. They're just in the um, plugins box. Blurb. Okay, the blurb is just a quick description. So we'll just say this plugin. Function and then gates and image. Exclamation mark. Uh, the blurb's just a quick description of your function, and the other one is tags. Tags. Uh, if you've got any particular tags that you want to attach to your plugin, see there's a little uh, search box, a little filter box up in the corner of the plugins window. So, uh, yeah, you might let your users type in tags. You might just go uh, negate and negative. Something like that might be my tags. It's up to you, really. Email. A B. Uh, you should probably put your email here. Yeah, if you've written a really cool plugin and you want to send it in to me, I'd like if you put your email there and stand behind what you've made. Uh, to this end, I'll put my email in. CarlCChris at gmail.com Yeah, good stuff. Okay, uh, description. Desk rip. Uh, okay, so the description is similar to the blurb, only it can be a bit more verbose. So you really want to describe, you know, very very accurately to your users uh, what your plugin does, and uh, that's what the description is for. So I'm just going to use the same text as my blurb, but uh, usually that would be more v verbose. Uh, the author. What is a creel? Uh, that's where you put your own name. Uh, copyright. Okay, so if you want to put a year for the copyright or some little message, you know, your company's name or something like that, 2013, you put that in there, copyright. And the other one is, um, the other string that Imogen's expecting is extensions. So this isn't actually used at the moment either, but uh, we're going to use this for, um, so that you can specify that your plugin uses AVX or SSE. And uh, Imogen won't try and run plugins if the CPU or if the hardware isn't capable of it. So that's what extensions is for. Uh, we're using plain old C++ here, so there's no extensions required. Plus Imogen's not reading at the moment. Alrighty, so that's the description function just there. Yeah, it just describes the plugin. Good stuff. Then we return that uh, list of strings. So the other function that we had was uh, the function itself, the plugin function itself, which is this one here. I'll just copy that from the header. Okay, we get rid of static and we put name there. Something like that. Okay, so what's going to happen is uh, if your plugin DLL answers Imogen's questions properly with this uh, description just here. Uh, Imogen's going to put it into its list of um, plugins. And when the user double clicks on it, uh, Imogen's going to give your plugin uh, all of this stuff. It's going to give it DT, which is a, a pointer to uh, the floating point uh, pixel data. It's going to give it the image width and height. And it's going to give you a redraw callback so that you can tell it to redraw. Um, okay, so one of the first things that you want to do is uh, record the start time. 
that your plugin started operating. So, system start time. System. Oh, IntelliSense, I miss you, I miss you. Um, system date time. Start time equals system date time now. Yeah, so we saw up in the corner of Imogen that there was a little timer that was telling us how long our plugins took. So in order for that to work properly, uh, you need to record the time that you started processing. So this can be anything really, but for this particular plugin, it's uh, right when the plugin starts executing. Uh, you might sort of attach that to some button or something, you know, maybe you don't want to record the entire time that a plugin's open uh, if the plugin involves a user clicking on buttons. But um, for this one, it's the whole... Yeah, it's right then, really. We start recording at the very start. Um, okay, so, uh, float star, I'll just say data equals float star and dt. Okay, so DT is uh, actually a 64-bit pointer. It's passed as an unsigned long long for no good reason, but uh, one of the first things that you want to do is cast it to a floating point pointer. Uh, remember also that this cast right here doesn't consume any CPU time at all. Um, yeah, we're not actually changing data here. All we're saying to the C++ compiler is that from now on, if I use data, uh, even though it was passed as uh, an unsigned long long, it's actually a floating point pointer. So yeah, don't worry, don't be worried about that consuming any of your uh, CPU time. Um, okay, so the other thing we might do is uh, int size in pixels equals width by height by four. Uh, not size in pixels, sorry, size in floats. Okay, so the size of our image is width by height in pixels multiplied by 4 because there's 4 components for each pixel. Uh, okay, the data, the DT that we're past just here, that pointer uh, is guaranteed to be at least 16 bytes aligned and it's also got extra padding on the end so that you don't have to worry about AVX or SSE going outside of the bounds of an array. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, so this program is really set up to use SIMD so uh, the data is completely padded for us and it's aligned as well. Anyway, I think we won't really use that in this particular tube, but we'll go into it next tube. Uh, when we do AVX, for int i equals 0, while i is less than this thing, uh, we'll get i plus equals 4. Um, okay, so we're just going to do a, a great big for loop in C++ and step through every single float in that array which has uh, you know, a whole bunch of pixels probably, and we're going to negate each of the values, except for the alpha value, which I'll keep as, uh, as 1, or opaque. i plus 0. Um, okay, so that's actually the uh, blue component of each pixel. Yeah, plus 0, so you don't actually need the plus 0 there, but... I'll put it there so that I can do this. Aha. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is the alpha channel. I might just make them right here. Blue, green, red. Make opaque. Um, okay, so the blue component equals 1 minus uh, whatever it was set to. The red component and the green component do the same thing. So all of that does is negates the image. Yeah, all of the dark red bits become light red and you know all of the light blue bits become dark blue, etc, etc, etc. So we produce an exact negative of the image. And uh, oh, I should also mention that um, the values are normalized, so each component uh, can range from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. Yeah, so when I said that it's 128 bits per pixel, I was actually lying. Yeah, since they're normalized, so only the mantissa of the floats is red. Uh, it's really closer to 96 bits per pixel. Anyway, that's our secret. Don't tell anybody. Uh, and the final thing that we want to do is redraw. So we call the uh, callback. 
with start time as the parameter. And that, my friends, is it. That's our function to negate every single pixel of the image that image and passes to us. If I just hit uh, Control-Shift-B to build, we'll see if we've got mistakes. Here we go. Add is not a member. Must be a capital A. Yeah, good stuff. So, uh, the list uh, class wants a capital A. Don't write what I wrote. <laughs> okay, so that built okay. And uh, if we come over to here, uh, this is the this is the place where Visual Studio is building to. So we want to go into X64. We want to find that DLL that it just built. There it is there. Plugin test 2.dll. And I want to copy. And if we open up our image and program and double click on the plugins directory and paste your new DLL into that directory. Uh, fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Okay, so it seems to have loaded fine. We'll open up a file, maybe this one. Big Mars picked up, plugins, show hide. And there it is there, test function. I'll double click on that. A presto. There you go. So you can see here where all of that description that we just went through goes to. And yeah, if you've done something wrong, uh, you probably won't see your plugin turn up in this plugins list. I uh, hope it all works though. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So you might notice that your um, plugin runs considerably slower than the other uh, C++ version of exactly the same thing. But uh, it's the same code. The only thing that I did in the uh, original negative was um, change it to release. Yeah, so change that to release if you want. Uh, you will have to re-specify for release mode that it's uh, a DLL and that it has um, CLR. So yeah, you've got to do that for every single one of the um, different modes that you compile to. So let me just hit Control B. Good stuff. Uh, okay, so before we go, I want to mention also that um, for debugging, it's best not to make a DLL. You know, we did this completely blind, and uh, it's fine because this is a really simple plugin, but when you're doing uh, especially the assembly stuff that we're going to look at next shoot, uh, you really need to be able to test out how you're going <laughs> in your coding. Otherwise, you know, assembly is a complicated language. Uh, so what you might want to do is instead of compiling to DLL, uh, compile to an EXE first. Yeah. Uh, all you've got to do is include a main method. Uh, I might put it over here somewhere. Maybe add new item. And yeah, I'll call it main. Yeah, just like that. Then you have sort of, you know, you include IO stream and that sort of thing. And I say IO stream and using, you know, your namespace and then main and then. Up here, you'd also do the uh, include uh, that, and that way uh, you can test your app out. You know, you can test calling the plugin from uh, C and have your um, Visual Studio debugging tools available. You know, you can't debug it from Imogen. Okay, well that was a little introduction there, mostly about uh, how to interact with. Uh, .NET 4.5 from native code and we're just about to get even more native since uh, next time what we'll do is look at an AVX version and possibly a S an SSE version yeah uh, depending on how time goes but yeah much the same thing so hopefully that was useful to people and uh, I look forward to getting stuck back into assembly next week thanks for listening see ya